Good morning and welcome to America's Home Cooking. I have an 18th century fried chicken recipe and it looks really interesting and I am going to try it. Now the first thing is, is you're going to have to get a fryer and we're going to have to cut this up. Now I know everybody knows how to pretty much cut a chicken up. So let me get this bird cut up and I will be back. Now what I'm going to do I've got the thigh and the leg here. And what I'm going to be doing, because of the way I'm going to be doing this chicken, and this is a big one. I don't think birds were this big at the time. They might have been using wild birds. I'm going to be cutting these in smaller pieces. Cutting them in half. Also, it will bring out the bone marrow, which I'm looking for as well. So let me get these going. Okay, I have the pieces cut up small, and I'm going to dry them. I just rinse them off and cutting them up. I also put the, uh, the liver and the stomach in here, and if there's a heart, I'll put it in as well and cook it. I don't think the uh, people wasted that much food at the time because they would use the hearts of the uh, venison and everything that they use, so why wouldn't they uh, use the heart and the stomach of the chicken? You see, it just doesn't make sense. So they would do this. And I don't think their chickens are as big as what we have today, because I want to say engineered, but that's such a weird term to use, they engineered chickens larger today. So I think a lot more was uh, simpler then. They used everything that they had. They couldn't afford waste. The more waste they had, the more they knew they weren't going to make it. So. This is why I did the chicken like this. I think they have large families. And if they had to kill two or three birds at a time to have fried chicken, I think they would run out. So I'm beginning to think they might have cut it up in smaller pieces so they could get more out of the bird and they could spread it out among everybody. So everybody got to eat and have their food. It's almost like an illusion. This is what we do in the kitchen. An illusion. <coughs> we make vegetables that children don't like. Or people don't like. We sit there and dress them up in such a manner and cut them up and design them, and all of a sudden it becomes fun food. We have to be quite creative sometimes to get our families to eat. And it's best if you do it when they're small. Getting them old is more hard to bend, as they would say. The old children into eating foods they might not like at first, but you eat them, and they'll realize, hey, this is good, you know, because they admire us as parents. <laughs> That's how we get them to eat. So anyway, this is why I think the pieces were smaller and uh, different than what we know today, because I just don't think... If, all right, if they quartered the birds, they might have been wild birds uh, and not the chickens that we have today. They could have been wild birds and smaller. I could see them quartering them and frying them then. But we have big ones, and we'd have big pieces, you know, and it'd be most difficult to do. So this is what I think really went on. They had smaller birds. But I don't mind doing these smaller so little meat on this one, this one's easy to do. Well, I should cut it. There's just some things when you think about back then. They didn't do it the way we do it today, so you have to see it differently. Mm. 
Okay, let me start putting some of the ingredients together and let me get them and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to be reading this recipe off as I do it. It needs two bay leaves. Now, it doesn't say to crumble it up or what, but I'm going to crumble it up. I'm sort of left high and dry at that point. teaspoon salt. fourth of a teaspoon of clove. Alright. Alright, we need two large lemons. Because we want the juice from two lemons and we're going to have to uh, actually measure it. Get as much juice out as you can. hard I heard it.
this one has a lot of seeds. Now I read old recipes and the one thing that always comes across is waste not. Nothing went to waste, so I am gonna put some lemon zest in here, thinking that they would also use that as part of the lemon and not waste it. I could be wrong, but it's what I'm going to do. That's why I know they had a compost and stuff they did. They didn't waste anything. They couldn't afford it. You're so far from um, growing food and stuff. You really can waste because you don't seem to have the concept of it. All right. Oh, I got some more in here. Seeds. Okay, now that was one third of uh, lemon juice, of two lemons that I got. I don't know how much you'll get, but it says two large lemons. So. And the next thing we want, if you cannot find this, by all means use apple cider. But uh, I went to Amazon to look for this, but I didn't know what in the name of God this was. And it's a malt vinegar. It's an original London pub malt. It's the traditional British flavor. And I have to put in a third of a cup of that too. The same amount you get from your lemon, you're gonna add this. That's it, now we're gonna mix all of this up. <laughs> really, that's a bit spicy. I have to cut on my finger so I can feel it. So when you get these old cookbooks, they get quite interesting, but uh, you have to work and sort of see what they're doing. I promised you, this recipe sounds too good. I've had it for a while and I think it's time that I, I try it. Now, they want this to sit. How long are we gonna let this sit? Let me see, I have to read my instructions. I had to translate it. Oh, three hours. So we're gonna leave this alone for three hours. So that means at eight o'clock, we will be getting ready to cook it from what I can see. Okay, let's get the batter going. 
they need, uh, they say one and a half cups of flour. So what I am doing is I'm going to use a half a cup of whole wheat and I am going to use a cup of all purpose. Like I say, I'm always making things more nutritious. This is why I'm using my salt blend and a half a cup of my whole wheat flour. I'm not saving these egg whites. I'm going to put them out in the yard and just, you know, I've got too much that has to go out in the yard, so I just decided I'll go ahead and just put those out and bury it in the garden. Now, what they request next is, is that they want white wine. sherry because I understand where sherry comes from if I remember correctly I can get away with this but the recipe wants this batter that we're making it has to be like a pancake batter they're not giving you many uh, ideas of uh, what you have to when it comes to the liquid they just tell you it's gonna look like a batter like a pan with a pancake batter so if you know how to make pancakes you know what your batter is gonna look like By the way, the chicken already smells excellent with the, you can smell the lemon and nutmeg coming together really, really nice. It's really, really quite nice. Come on, come on. almost like a batter. So we're going to finish it up. Right out of the white wine and sherry.
how you want it. Now they want lard for this. Uh, I haven't made any in many, many years. Uh, the God, one of the Godfathers to, uh, no, I'm going to say his name, Hugh Miller, actually, who was known as Lefty Louie in the big band era, who was also an artist and his uh, sketches and paintings are being seen in the Smithsonian, I think in Washington, D.C. Uh, he was a dear friend of ours. Uh, he taught me how to do lime. I told him I wanted to have an old fashioned Christmas dinner. So he said, okay, I'm gonna show you. And there was a lot, he showed me how you stuff the goose with apples, just plain quartered apples. Don't peel them, don't even remove the core. Anything, you just quarter them and shove them until you pack them. And then you had to get, we used chopsticks because we didn't have anything else at the time. So we used uh, chopsticks and laid it in a roasting pan and we put the goose on it and we put the lid over it. And he said, now we are going to uh, make lard. And I told him I didn't know how. And he said, I'm going to show you how to do this. So what he did was he sat there and after the first hour, I can't remember the temperature he did on the goose, but he was careful not to cook it too fast, but not to cook it too slow. I think he used 350 or 325, but don't hold me to that in the oven. And what he did was, uh, he took my ladle because I didn't have a, a thing to pick grease up. Uh, I can't think of the name of it right now. It skipped with me because I'm just going back watching him do this in my head. And he was taking the fat and he said, get me a big pot, Sandy. I said, okay. So I got him a big pot and he put it on a really low flame and he started pouring the grease in every half hour because there was a lot of, a lot of fat. It was a big goose, but when it got done, it wasn't that big, but it was nice when we had it. And so he was taking it and he was putting it in this big pot on a low flame. And periodically I would see stuff coming up to the top of it and he would scrape that off, just that part, just take it off, gently taking it off, taking it off, taking it off, taking it off. By the end of the day, he said, we have lard, it's rendered. And uh, he said, you let this cool and you put it away. And he told me to put it in the refrigerator. I, and he said, you make a pie with this, it's the best pie. It's better than shortening, it's better than butter, it's better, you, the lard from a goose is beautiful. And I did, I made a pie with it and the crust took my breath away. It was so good. But he taught me how to render and make my own lard. I don't have any, so I'm going to use here because we're coming up on the time that we're going to have to, is corn oil. So I'm going to use corn oil. Now, I have put oil up to here because they want this chicken submerged in it. Okay, that's why I cut the pieces small. Now, I am going to do something else that's a little different. This is I'm going to add a vitamin E to this. I do it with all my oils. So let me get that. Now the vitamin E I U is D alpha catoferol and it's spelled with a Y. The other one that is not spelled with a Y is a synthetic and the mixed catoferols, people take them but it does nothing for the body and they've proven it, they've tried to see what it does and it doesn't do anything. This is the one that works. So now I'm gonna let this get a little want it up to 350. They've been telling me how hot they want. They don't want it burning, but they want it uh, at 350. Of course, at that time, you know where the colonials were cooking. Well, I'm cooking on a stove, okay? So I have to 
do some compensation and also I want to make it more nutritious so you know I'm going to do that as well all right uh, they said it'll be an autumn color is what you're looking for something else they say is to fry parsley if I'm going to fry parsley I am not going to crumble it up I would lay it, fry it, and lay the stems on the edge to design the chicken up in a, in a, a bowl or a platter, whatever you'd be using. So, by the time this is done, because this is just minutes away of being three hours, we'll sit there and we'll start. And by the way, it has a beautiful smell. I want to say it's sweet because of the malt vinegar. But then you have the nutmeg and the lime and the lemon juice. Now I know the lemon juice and the lime uh, will kill any bacteria. But you have the peeling in it and that mixes so well with the nutmeg with that malt and lemon. I just can't believe the flavor. And this is just smelling, I haven't even cooked it yet. And we're gonna be cooking it in this batter and see how it comes out. So that would be quite interesting. So let me get this up to where it has to be and we'll start frying. Okay, the oil's up to 350 and so that's where they want it. So we'll start putting this in the batter and start frying them. I'm going to continue frying and when we're done, I will be back and show you what they look like, but we are frying it at 350. I'm trying it. It has a very unique taste. And it's very, very crunchy. I mean, this batter holds together and is really crunchy. I think you'll like it. For crunchiness, it outdoes Kentucky Fried every time. Okay, I've only got a few pieces left in the last uh, batch, so I'm going to go ahead and show you. Here it is. I'm going to be getting ready to try to fry parsley when I'm done with it. But I have to say, and you're going to notice I'm not saying founding fathers on this. I have to say, the founding mothers of this country really knew what they were doing. This chicken is so crunchy, the batter that it puts Kentucky Fried to shame. They have, they can't even get close to it. That's how good this chicken is. And if you fry it once, I am sure your family, you cannot go back to frying chicken the way you did. They're gonna say, uh-uh, I want this one. This is an 18th century fried chicken. And I have to, I can just imagine the lard that they fried this in, you know, because they had geese, well, they take the goose fat or the pork fat and make their lard. Can you imagine just how good this is? And I just used corn oil. And it's already delicious, so I can't wait till I learn. Well, not till I learn, but till I get stuff together so I can make lard again because that's a real treat. Okay? <laughs> so listen, uh, I'm going to finish this up and I'll be back and we're going to try to fry parsley, which I have never done. They say to crumble it up, but I'm gonna, if I can fry it and it looks halfway decent, I'm going to stick it around the chicken and use it more for a design. Fingers crossed, but I'll be back.
I'm trying to find this rock, I believe you me. It pops, and you have to be careful. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but it's even going to work. very, very crunchy. I did not think this was going to act up like this, but it did. It's almost like uh, sounds of when you shake it, slivers of glass. All right, just letting you know. So I guess, yeah, and it's like it, uh, it dissolves in your mouth as soon as you, you know, have it. But I just said I'll throw all my broccoli in there and see what I get because I had no idea what I was going to get when I did this. <laughs> so you can eat the broccoli as well. So if you dance it around your chicken also realize your family will be able to eat it. It won't be any waste or any extra off of your uh, work because they'll be able to eat it as well. I'm just sticking the stems on and leaving the leaves. Okay. I do think it's like, I mean, it's so crunchy. Look, look. Can you hear that? Seventeen, no, eighteenth century fried chicken, right here. That's a lot of oil I have to put, but I'm definitely probably going to have to make this more than once, knowing my sons. Take care. Bye bye.